For Audit Azer, I have no words, as they could never paint the full picture. He's a musician, a poet, a visual artist, a graphic and a type designer, and in the very core, he is a thinker. In 2001, Audit founded Hebrew Typography, the first type foundry specializing in Hebrew type. He lives in Tel Aviv and teaches at the Holon Institute of Technology, just a bit south outside of Tel Aviv. Shalom, Audit, and thank you for your food for thought. I think that I would like to appear as a thinker more than anything else. To tell you the truth, I don't mind anymore that they will call me a typographer or not a typographer or an artist or not an artist, whatever, a designer, not a designer. I don't know. It's not the right question. The right question is whether you are good enough to deliver some thoughts. And I would like to think about myself as a thinker that sometimes does something through typography and sometimes does something through video and through just simply writing and through this very conversation, you know. You know, back in 2006... uh, I've I've created the Typosperma project. Uh, and you know when I when I did that, that's that's the project that uh, combines like human sperm and uh, typography and uh, information, DNA information, and of course everything was like invented. It was fictional because I couldn't do it myself. Uh, but I could think about it. And I just did it because I did it. I was young. I was not experienced, you know. Um, I was, it was interesting. That's all. And I had time because I didn't have a lot of clients back then, you know. So I just did it. And then, and and also I didn't call it by name. I mean, I didn't know what kind of design and what kind of graphic design I'm doing because I didn't see it anywhere else. And then I got an email from Paola Antonelli from the MoMA, the uh, chief curator of design and architecture in a MoMA. You know, I was very young. I got the this email and she said, I love this fictional design that you're doing. And I was like, oh, so that's how they call it. You know, I didn't even know what I'm doing. I was just doing it because that's what I felt like doing. I think that you need to have an agenda. If you do not have an outside agenda, outside of the the creative process itself, you are, you are flat when I look around at, at, at my own heroes, you know, of design, they all had uh, an additional agenda to what they did, whether it was political or whether it was uh, 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 about heritage. I don't know. A lot of aspects which are not necessarily directly connected to design. So if you ask what is my own agenda, I think I'm, I want to process everything that I do not understand and to try to make an attempt to understand it using my design abilities. I think I'm a frustrated uh, scientist.
in, in some ways. I mean, I think that I, I touch subjects that I would like to spare a whole lifetime if I could be uh, two Odets or three Odets, one of us would probably be a scientist. Uh, but somehow I went to design. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't mean that I cannot uh, use, uh, I cannot do anything about science. And I, I'm just like a lot of other people. I'm, I'm fascinated by science and I'm fascinated by the possibilities that science has today. And uh, I think that science is far more important than any kind of design, especially these days. So what I'm trying to do, I think, is to touch this importance in a way or to, to get inspiration from this importance. Uh, I was all, always fascinated by the fact that scientists not only understand life better than us, uh, regular people, you know, but also they have the ability, the ability, sorry, to influence our future in a direct physical way. This is amazing. This is so amazing. I'm so jealous of every scientist that discovered something that influenced other people's lives. When you talk about something which is outside yourself, you always self-express yourself. So self-expression as, as the only aspect of something that you do, boring for me, at least. But when you go out of yourself and you pay attention to something that happens outside to the society, to the world, to nature, to something which is bigger than yourself, then it starts to be really interesting and important. What I was trying to do in, 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 uh, in, in projects like the biotypography and uh, other projects that I, I try to mix scientific uh, 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 kind of uh, fiction thinking is to think, what if I could do this? What if I could influence other people's lives in the same manner that scientists do every day? Uh, so that was my fascination about this aspect. And in the same manner that I'm fascinated about politics these days. You know, I moved from being a pseudo-scientist into being a pseudo-politician uh, now. You know, I called it We Are Family. And this is a kind of a way of saying that we became family. And when, when I say we, I said the world. The world became family, and that was even before COVID, the COVID uh, thing. So, so and, and now we deeply understand it. We understand it, that if someone is ill somewhere else, it affects me. And this is a completely new situation. And I felt it in the sense that you and I see the same videos on YouTube. And this is quite amazing. It, it blurs the boundaries. I've tried to push the, the limits, you know, to push the boundaries because again, as graphic designers, uh, we often uh, find ourselves 
hiding from reality instead of reflecting it. We leave the hard work to artists and we don't want to deal with hard things usually on our everyday life. Uh, so in this project, I, I try to, to really go dive, dive into this situation where we are bombarded with very hard uh, images and videos on a daily basis and to use it as a typographer in order to create something that I might call a typeface or a video or half typeface and half video, uh, a hybrid creature uh, that uh, talks about reality instead of hiding it. Is it okay just to do something nice? I think, I think for the long run, it's boring because everything is political by the end of the day. Everything is influencing our lives, therefore it is political. And I think that this is the most interesting aspect of our profession. If you're willing to dive into that, if you're not afraid, if you find, uh, find it uh, enjoyable to think about yourself as someone who influences other people, so just go for it because this is, this is extremely interesting and this gives, I think it gives us as designers purpose. And as I said before, purpose for our life is maybe the most important thing. Are we deeply aware of the fact that our good design sometimes helps things that are not very good for us? For instance, if you design a Coca-Cola bottle and you do it really good because you are a really good designer, did you do something good? That's the question. So now we are dealing in, in, the, in a deepest level of the question, what is good and bad design? And I think that this is, for me, the only question that needs to be asked. That means that when I design something for a client, I should ask myself if I agree with, with a product. And sometimes it's not very easy to answer. Yeah, and what is a good purpose? For one, for one person, a, a good purpose is a bad purpose for the other person, you know? So these are questions that uh, I think we, we shouldn't escape of. Especially when we are students, I think that we have to keep attention to these questions because later on, on the everyday daily work, it's, it becomes even harder. And also we tend to kind of uh, forget or neglect uh, these kinds of questions when it comes to uh, making money. I mean, we have to, to leave some, somehow, you know. It's good to have this area uh, open for conversation because I think that at the end of the day, as designers, we really design the awareness of other people. We influence other people in so many ways. And we are responsible. We are responsible to our society. And when I say society in these days, I mean the world. I think that we are responsible for the communication itself. And, and there is, there is no way that we can hide behind our designer facade, you know, just to say, oh, I'm just responsible for choosing the font. Well, choosing the font is a political act or action. That means that we are responsible directly. I think that uh, just uh, doing something that looks nice is uh, maybe harming communication. Maybe it is the opposite of helping 
uh, the, the, the core of communication. I think when I look at my own teenage times, I think that relatively to this generation, we were spoiled because the change of technology was slower. That's, that, that, saying, that means that uh, today, uh, the generation that is uh, in his teenage time now, they will have, I think, to kick the butt of culture in a way that will allow them to freely think about new solutions. And new solutions means to neglect traditional ways of doing things, including graphic design, including typography. And it is a heavy mission, but it is not, it's not impossible because uh, uh, generation before them, they did it, you know. I'm thinking about the generation that grew up in the 60s, uh, where uh, cultural ways of looking at things as completely changed. And, you know, there is a there is a song of Bob Dylan saying that parents, you have to give up. I mean, you have to let the young people decide for themselves because it's their mission. And I totally agree with that. Things have changed so much. And my only advice for this generation is to take responsibility and to throw away everything that has nothing to do with their lives because their lives are completely different now. Uh, typography, it depends on reading and reading becomes less and less prominent aspect of our lives. That means that letter will become less and less uh, prominent item or object in our lives. And the, the question is whether you are going to cry about that or if you, as a designer, you are going to solve this situation and you are going to find new ways of using typography. And I chose the second thing. I chose the second way. The fact that relative, I'm relatively easy with letters will help me to talk about the important things, which, which, you know, design is only the tip of the iceberg of everything. And if you're doing good design, that means that you talk about the iceberg. And I think that this is our mission to talk about the huge thing with something which is relatively flat, relatively small, and relatively less important. So it might be that letters, and now I'm entering a completely unknown area, you know, that I don't have any answers, just, just ideas or thoughts. Maybe letters will become something that we are, we don't know now will become uh, a different aspect of culture than just simply delivering information. It's fascinating for me. It's very abstract right now. Uh, it's very hard to, uh, to be sure of where it's going, it is going. But, but I think that if we dive into it and we think about that, we can have some, some very Mm, surprising uh, answers or at least experiments and this is good enough for me. If I was if I was somebody else, I wouldn't choose typography in order to talk about these things. But being myself, I can't help it. I love this profession. Tough luck. I love the fact that letters are uh, have a lot of layers and I want to make use of it. So I use this profession in order to speak about these things. If you want to cut down my own mission, I can say that 
I would like to demonstrate uh, the possibilities of typography. Sometimes I would like to follow the, mm, the steps of the giants that uh, worked before me. Sometimes I would like to go uh, further to places that I cannot imagine. Uh, but, um, but basically, yes, continue creating. When you are young, it's relatively easier, relatively easier to, because you are pushed by your own energy. You are pushed by the energy of your youth and you don't know a lot. So if, if you don't know a lot, you are not stopping yourself. You know, that's the benefit of not knowing a lot. And also, you are the voice of your generation. And your generation is what's happening now. So it's relatively easy. But, you know, I'm nearly 50. So that means that the world is rushing ahead. You know, it's like a, a, a fast forward all the time. And also you are more tired because you are older. You know a lot more. That means that you stop yourself more. And also there is a lot of noise around, you know. So going back to my mission to continue creating, suddenly it doesn't sound like a very simple task. Suddenly it sounds like a heavy task. And you know something? I wish I can do it until I'm dead. I wish I can create something. It can be small, it can be big. When I will be 91, you know, my grandfather, he died at 91. I want to die with my pen in my hand, you know. That's how I want to die, you know, designing a new typeface. Now, maybe like three of us might start a project together and we'll all work individually on lots of sketches and then we'll sort of we've created like a, a Google deck workbook for each project and we'll keep throwing all our sketches in there like everyone will do it and these Google decks will end up like 500 pages long or something and 